Hey, welcome back to the channel. Uh, thank you all for coming in today. My name is Jeremy, and you are talking to the Stock Brother, and you're on the Stock Brother channel. Uh, welcome back today. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get into a different type of video today. Uh, this is a video that I've been wanting to do for a while, so uh, trying to put it together here and, and get this channel rolling, get everything rolling. Um, thank you for my subscribers who've, who've all subscribed, and thank you to for everybody who is liking, watching, and sharing the videos. I most definitely appreciate it. Uh, we're trying to get that subscriber count up and trying to get those watch minutes up. You know how it is with the with the YouTube algorithm. So um, that's what we're doing today. We're going to get into a different video. I'm going to talk about a company that I have hinted to for a while on some other videos, some previous videos. I've kind of told you about it, and I've been getting a lot of questions, people asking me uh, to go into a little bit of a analysis about this about this company. So. Uh, that's what I decided to do. You all keep in mind, I am not a financial advisor. I don't want you to go and buy a stock simply because I buy a stock. This is kind of just a, a short breakdown or a quick little breakdown of the company to give you an idea uh, about the company. Uh, this is basically so you can go and do your own research, do some more research and decide if this is a good investment for you or not. So um, don't don't just take this as me telling you to go buy this company. I, again, am not a financial advisor. I'm just kind of giving you the rundown of this company. Uh, just another disclosure, I do own this company. I am loaning this company. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get into it. And I'm going to kind of give you my, my bullish thesis around the company and why I, think it's, uh, why I think it's a good company. So let's get into this. So the ticker symbol that we're going to get into today is going to be ticker symbol FRT. And that is going to be Federal Realty Investment Trust. Now, this is a REIT, and this is a company that I have uh, told you about it. I kind of hinted to it, but we're going to go ahead and try to get into a breakdown of it here and uh, see what we can come up with here. Again, uh, as of me prepping this video, it's the, the stock price is $80.32 per share. Now, if you look at the chart there, I got a yearly chart that I got put up there for you to take a look at. And as you can see, it has dropped significantly. And the reason why it's dropped, of course, is because of this 100-year event that we got going on right now. So to me, this is a great opportunity to buy into the company. A lot of times you get these companies and they're, they're riding high on the horse. And you never really find a, a entry to be, to get in there and buy it at a cost or at a price that you want to buy it for. Uh, right now, with everything that's going on, it has dropped significantly. If you can kind of take a look at that chart. And... Um, Price now is at $80.32. So to get into a little description about this company, uh, this company is basically a REIT. They invest in multi-use properties. They have a lot of different properties in major metropolitan areas. There's about uh, eight different metropolitan areas, and they're in the suburbs of those particular areas. So um, a lot of their properties, they have real estate, they have business, they have uh, retail, and they have restaurants all in their mixed use properties. So that's kind of gives you a description of the company. Basically what they do is, is again, they're a REIT, they're a real estate investment trust. So they buy real estate and they lease it out to tenants for the most part. So it's a pretty easy business model to understand when you talk about a REIT. They buy it, lease it out. Of course, they got to pay their bills on it and whatever extra that they have left over after when they get their rent. That's going to be the amount of money that they bring into the company. So that's a, a, a little description, and you can kind of read a little bit more on it. Uh, if you'd like, you can just pause the video, take a look at the, the slide there, and it will give you a little bit more information about the company. Next, I want to just show you a couple of different properties that they do own. Um, these properties are not just a regular house. I mean, if you can kind of take a look there, we got uh, Santana Row. Santana Row is a property that they have out in Silicon Valley. Um, they have it out there where all of the tech giants and all of the tech people are, are right there so they can kind of go and make use of the property. We have Coco Walk Shopping Center. Um, it is, uh, of course, it's a shopping center, but when you talk about FRT, they do, and a lot of people call them the mall REIT. They're not really the inside mall REIT. They're more like the outside mall REIT, like the, the strip mall REIT type of thing. So when you talk about the whole shopping center aspect of it, yeah, they are shopping centers, and that's one of the reasons why 
in March, the, the stock dropped so low because, as you know, when you talk about the retail aspect of it, a lot of retail businesses are going out of business right now. And it is hurting them a little bit. But these are some of the other properties. You got their, their Hollywood Boulevard property. Um, this Hollywood Boulevard property, is, of course, is in L.A. And um, as you can see on the picture there, they have a L.A. fitness there in the picture. A lot of fitness gyms and different things like that are really getting hit and really being affected by the events that are going on right now. And the management team of this company is really taking advantage of this because there are a lot of tenants and people that are going out of business. There are other people that are thriving in this particular environment and want to be in locations like they have, in grade A real estate like they have. So they're taking this opportunity to move some people out and get some new, better tenants in at this particular point. So um, I think they moved LA Fitness out of a couple of different locations, and I think they replaced them with Whole Foods. So, you know, you might have to take that into consideration when you talk about this REIT because of that. Here's another one. Uh, you got Willow Lawn. This one is in Richmond, Virginia. And uh, you also have Bethesda Row. Bethesda Row is in Bethesda, Maryland. So these kind of give you an idea of some of the properties that they do own and some of the real estate and how it's prime grade A real estate for mixed used uh, communities. Next, we're going to get into their income stream. And when you talk about being diversified, there is some a level of diversification when it comes to this company. Um, if you look uh, by category there, 21% is office and residential space. They do offer residential properties. They do offer uh, places for you to live, work, shop all together, again, uh, included in those mixed use properties. 24% uh, is going to be essential, uh, essential retail, grocery stores, uh, uh, CVSs, uh, different things like that. They're going to be essential retail. And then you got 15% is going to be in restaurants. So, um, of course, you know how restaurants are getting hit right now, but restaurants will bounce back at some point. Um, some of them will go out of business and others will move in. So you kind of have to keep that in mind. When you talk about the tenants that they have, the top 25 tenants make up about 28% of their of their revenue stream, so uh, of their income. So those top 25, if you can kind of take a look at the, the slide there to kind of give you an idea of the top 25 uh, tenants that they have, uh, some like Kroger, you see Whole Foods, CVS, Home Depot, uh, Splunk, etc. Uh, there, there are a lot of different companies there that are major companies, are major businesses that that actually are their tenants. So it gives you an idea of the security that they have in regards to being able to collect the rents from these some of these bigger tenants that they have there. So when you talk about them adding assets, or when you talk about their assets growing. Um, if you take a look here, from from 2016 to 2017, they added more properties. Uh, they they added 15.72 percent of assets, which are basically properties, basically uh, buildings, uh, things uh, you know, properties that they can make money on. So from from 2017 to 18, it wasn't as much growth. 0.22 percent. Uh, from 18 to 19, they had small uh, increase to 8 percent. And from basically year to date, uh, from, from 19 to now, they've added about 22% when you talk about their assets, when they talk about adding properties. So they are most definitely growing when you talk about building out more real estate and trying to grow the company. And that's most definitely something that you need to think about as well when, when you think about investing in this company. Now I want to get into a couple of metrics or a couple of ratios um, that we can use here to try to value the company or just kind of see where the company is coming from. This first slide here is just going to give you an idea of, it's going to give you an idea of the different metrics you want to be looking at. Um, and we have kind of went over some of these when you talk about the PE ratio. I have a video that you can check out called PE ratios uh, explained. And you can go in and kind of look at the forward PEs, the trailing PEs, and it'll give you an idea of what those things are. But here in this slide, you can kind of see that it kind of gives you an idea of the different categories that you have, the PS ratio, PB ratio, uh, EBITDA, uh, PE ratios. These are some, some ratios that you're going to use in order to value the companies. You know, on this next slide, it's, it's just a longer uh, chart here. So you can kind of take a look and see the past uh, few quarters 
and you want to compare the, the, the P.E. ratios, the, the trailing P.E. and the four P.E. from where it was four or five quarters ago, yeah, that's one way you want to use. And again, you can check that video out. It'll give you an idea of what I'm saying when it comes to comparing these companies to their companies past and also comparing it to other companies in the sector. So be sure and check that video out. It's called Cost Basis and uh, Buying the Dip. That's a good video there to check out. So y'all be sure and go, go catch that one. Now this next slide here is basically a way to compare all of the different metrics and it's going to give you a, uh, a well-rounded view of the, the price to sales ratio, price to book ratios, and all of these ratios for the last few quarters, uh, for the last three or four quarters. So it can give you a better idea of where the company has came from and where the company is going. Also, uh, when you do your own research, take a look at the stock price. Um, take a look at where it's came from and where it's going and um, kind of see where the valuations are. When you talk about this stock, this is one stock that I have. Uh, I had a small position in. And when everything kind of hit, I saw an opportunity to get in and build this position out into a bigger position. So, and real estate investment trusts have a, uh, they have a track record of bouncing back after crises. So you all want to keep that in mind as well. Now I want to take a look at the balance sheet of this company. We won't go over the balance sheet in uh, specifics too, too much. Um, I'm going to put a video out uh, when it comes to helping you to read balance sheets and understand balance sheets. Right now, I basically want you to take a look at the total assets on this chart. The total assets, if you can see, the company has about 6.7, almost $6.8 billion in assets. So uh, that being said, I want you to take a look at the liabilities there. And the total liabilities, you're looking at about $4.1 in liabilities. So they have a lot more assets than they have liabilities at this particular point. You always want to be looking to that. I like to look for a uh I like to look for a pretty good ratio. There's no specific ratio of assets to liabilities that you look for. It's just your own personal preference. Of course you don't want a company that has a whole lot of liabilities, so which are basically bills that they have to pay. You want them to have way more assets and way more cash, cash equivalents uh, on a balance sheet than they have liabilities or bills. So that being said, y'all uh, keep a lookout for that uh, video when it comes to reading balance sheets. Y'all keep a lookout for that one as well. They do have some long-term debt, but that's pretty common. If you if you take a look at the debt there, that's pretty common when you when you talk about a REIT because of the fact that when they buy properties, they take debt out on those properties. They go and they finance those properties. So, and they lease them out to get money back on it. So that that's just a part of the business model. If you're going to have a lot of debt. You're going to have a lot of long-term debt. Just like if you go buy a house, you're going to have a 30-year fixed. So for the next 30 years, you're going to have debt, depending on what you put down. Um, so in this particular business model, as or in a REIT or real estate investment trust, there is going to be a lot of debt, but you just want to make sure that they have more assets than they have liabilities at a, at a pretty good rate. This next slide is a really good slide. It'll give you a basic rundown of the company, what they have going on. Um, you can see that their credit rating is a A3 um, with Moody's. So the credit rating is pretty good. If they did need some money, they could go borrow money. You can see the different suburbs that they are in when you talk about the eight major metropolitan areas that they are close to um, and the suburbs that they have their properties in. Um, you can see that they do have uh, 104 properties as of right now. They have about 2,900 tenants as of right now, different tenants. And uh, you can also see down here at the bottom of this slide, which is the best thing about this company is one of the major reasons why I invested in this company in the first place is you can see that there is a 53 consecutive year uh, increase of the dividends. They have been increasing and have not cut their dividend for 53 straight years. It Actually, it was 52, but this is a, a pretty new, uh, a newer slide here. They just raised that dividend probably about a week ago from when I'm prepping this video and getting this video ready. So that made it 53 consecutive years of dividend increases. So if you take a look at this chart here, it kind of gives you an idea of the last 31 years and it gives you a chart of their dividend, how they've increased the dividend. This also gives you uh, an idea where the stock price was when these dividend increases uh, were continuing. 
So it kind of you can kind of look at that, and that's great information um, when you talk about uh, these, this dividend, and and it's and it's pretty safe in regards to um, the money that they have on the balance sheet, and in regards to uh, uh, the status that they have. I mean, this company is a dividend king, and when they get to that particular status, they don't want to lose that status. They want to be a dividend king, and they want to keep the streak going. So whatever they can do to not cut that dividend and to keep paying that dividend with this particular streak, that works in the shareholders favor, especially if that's what you're buying the company for. So I want to thank you all for coming in today. Hopefully you got a lot of value out of this video and I want you all to please subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, uh, like and share this video and um, you all be sure and come back. Let me know if you like this type of video and we'll try to get you some more. So thank you all for coming in. You all have a good rest of the day. Bye-bye.